Ladies and gentlemen, I know you all seen this woman, especially if you were watching the case in Tulsa. She is a survivor and there were two other survivors. And you know, the two other survivors were brother and sister. And um, the brother died back in October at 102. His sister is 109 and still living. And Leslie Benningfield Randall, she is also 109 years old. Well, she has not given up on their fight. So they are going to take this to a higher court to fight. So they're not giving up on their reparations. And I'm glad these women have the energy to do so. So I was looking at the story that Leslie Bennington, um, um, Benningfield Randall had told. She was six years old when Tulsa happened. And she remembers the white mob coming in there and the violence and the killing and everything. She remembers it vividly. So 109 years old and a survivor, and she still got a lot of fight in her. So for decades, she recalled the fire that raged through the neighborhood of Greenwood and the frantic trip with her grandmother to the safety of a fairground. Miss Randall is 109 years old. She was six years old when the white mob attacked Greenwood. She said it was very violent. And over a century, Miss Randall witnessed, you know, things that she saw, you know, like the world wars and the civil rights movement and Obama being elected as president. So it's just the things that she has lived through. And the other known survivor is Viola Fletcher. She's also 109 years old. And we all heard about Hughes Van Ellis. That was her brother. That was um, Viola Fletcher's brother. And he died back in October at 102 years old. So they filed a final brief with the Oklahoma Supreme Court to reconsider whether an earlier dismissal by the court judge Caroline Walls was proper. Should the court affirm the lower court's dismissal, the case would be over. If the lower court ruling is reversed, the case can resume. So the legal team, joined by Ms. Fletcher and her family members, discussed the urgency of the case in front of the courthouse in Oklahoma. Everybody understands this would be the last hurrah for these survivors to try to get justice. Demario Solomon Simmons, the civil rights lawyer leading the lawsuit, said in an interview, ending the case without trial, he said, would be a low point in the fight for racial justice. It stands for uh, people that can be bombed from the sky, burnt out of their homes, murdered, and have all of their belongings taken, literally nothing that can be done about it. Mr. Solomon Simmons said, it says, hey, we can do this with impunity. Well, they still do many things in impunity, you know, you got to understand the entire government is racist in this country. It always have been and always will be. The state and city officials have said they cannot be held responsible for events that occur over a century ago. Yeah, but see, you, you can't keep running to that. You got two living survivors. See, you can't use the usual, oh, you weren't a slave. Oh, that was over a long time ago. You did, you were never a slave. See, you can't use all those excuses in this case because you got two people that actually lived through that massacre in 1921 in Oklahoma. Can't use those excuses. So 
In court documents, Kevin McClure, an assistant attorney general for Oklahoma, wrote the survivors failed to properly allege how the Oklahoma agencies could be responsible. The massacre, one of the worst episodes of racial violence in American history, started with an accusation. Yeah, but, you know, a, a lot of our men died from accusations. You know, they ended up lynched in a tree and over an accusation. And, I mean, Karen is showing us how it's done. She's full of accusations when she go out here messing with Black folks. So she's actually showing us how it was done. So on May 31st, 1921, a white mob gathered outside of the county courthouse where Dick Rowland, a young black man, was being held over allegations that he assaulted a white woman. They always use that old, never mind, let me just move on. The rioters, including a man deputized by the civil uh, by the civil officials eventually descended on Greenwood, a neighborhood so self-reliant that it had become known as Black Wall Street. Within two days, it was gone. 35 blocks burned to the ground. Neighbors were dead or missing. Buildings reduced to rubble. And the toll was staggering. Now they're saying 300, but the survivors are saying it was way more than 300. I, I doubt if it was just 300. I don't believe the 300 figure. And these people are notorious for lying about numbers. So um, they estimated uh, eight thousand suddenly homeless and nearly 1,500 homes were burned and looted. Mr. Rowland was exonerated, but no one was ever held responsible for the massacre. No survivors were ever compensated for their losses. The survivors have never told their stories in court. At the time, the city covered up what happened. Many survivors didn't talk about it. In the mid-1980s, LaDonna Penny, 51, a granddaughter of Miss Randall, convinced her to share her experience. She began to speak more about it in the years that followed as the momentum for redress grew. In 2021, Miss Randall was among a few survivors who testified before the subcommittee considering reparations. Her statement read in part, my community was beautiful and filled with happy and successful black people. Then everything changed. It was like war. White men with guns came and destroyed my community. We couldn't understand why we did. Uh, she said, what did we do to them? You don't have to do nothing to them. We didn't understand. We were just living, but they came and they destroyed everything. She added, I remember running outside of our house. I ran past dead bodies. It wasn't a pretty sight. I still see it today in my mind a hundred years later. Yeah, I mean, that's trauma that will stay with her forever. Miss Randall affectionately called Mother Randall by friends and family, spent most of her life in Tulsa and worked as a caretaker for seniors. She said the memories of the massacre came rushing back occasionally, though some of the details are lost to time, but what she remembers still makes her sad and mad. It comes across your mind, not pleasant at all, and then you think of some things that could have been done to stop what happened, she said her soft voice giving way to silence. In 2020, a few months after the murder of George Floyd, a black man uh, by a white police officer, actually officers, because they all took part in it, had forced many uh, would believe a national reckoning on racial injustice. The lawsuit was filed under Oklahoma's public nuisance law, it makes the argument that the massacre's effect didn't end in 1921, 
but it had continued more than a hundred years and three generations later. As evidence, the lawyer point to the city enduring racial disparities, economic inequities, and long-held trauma among survivors and their descendants. Judge Wall, who had ruled the case, could proceed in May of 2022, dismissed the case with prejudice this July, meaning that it could be taken up only by a higher court. Lawyers for the city argued that simply being connected to a historical event does not provide a person with unlimited rights to seek compensation from any project in any related to the historical event. In August, the Oklahoma Supreme Court agreed to hear the appeal of the lower court's dismissal. The fundamental point is we should be able to proceed under the law if you actually apply the law to the facts said Randall T. Adams, a litigation partner. Okay, so we should get a chance to prove the case. That's what he is saying. And he's right, they should. You know, the fact that this was dismissed is a disgrace. You know, so you, you complain that, you know, the people weren't around. Well, you, now you got people that are around that did live through it. So what you're saying is the government and what they did should have complete impunity from compensating any survivors. That's what you're really saying. But y'all say that about everything when it concerns us. <laughs> there is nothing that shouldn't have impunity when it comes down to us, according to many of you. So I'm glad she's continuing on the fight. I hope the higher court where they will be able to prevail in the higher court. I really do wish that for them. You know, 109, you got two of them that are 109 years old. That's pretty remarkable for real. You know, so much for we die young. We, we don't live as long as you so much for that, right? Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.